Hey, I'm Nick Cox with Gristle King, and I'm going to show you how to use ChirpStack on Helium. So we're going to start off by going to Medio Scientific. Actually, I'm going to start off by putting on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, go to MedioScientific.com. I'll put the link down in the description, and you're going to go over to the top right, and you'll hit the console menu item. That will take you over to something like this, which you can always find at console.medioscientific.com. I've talked a little bit about Medio Scientific before. This is the website that I'm using to show you how to start and run a Helium business. This is what I use when I'm talking to businesses who want to use Helium, who I'm selling on the idea of using Helium. So kind of a, a demo business for you to check out. That's the the very short story behind Medio Scientific. Um, but console.medioscientific.com will take you to this instance of ChirpStack that is being run by Disk91 for me uh, so that we can show you what's going on in Helium so that we can use ChirpStack on Helium. If you don't have credentials here, you'll be asked to sign up. If you do, you just hit the put your credentials in, hit the submit button, and that will take you inside of ChirpStack. Now, ChirpStack is set up not to run specifically on Helium. It was just set up to run any LoRaWAN... Um, or to run any LoRaWAN, so it's a LoRaWAN network server, an LNS. And as such, there are a couple things on this dashboard menu, like active gateways and gateway map, which just don't apply. The way that a normal LoRaWAN would work is that a gateway would be what we would call a hotspot, and you'd see a list of all the hotspots in existence on there, but you don't want to see a list of a million hotspots, or even 400,000, same thing with a map. So ChirpStack treats the Helium network as one giant gateway. So basically it doesn't show anything for these active gateways or gateway map. Don't worry too much about it, but that's what's going on behind the scenes. Now you should have a user in here. I've got a uh, Nick plus test at guestgristlecling.com. That is this user account. And up at, um, let's see, I was gonna say the top is, I think, oh, you can change password, log out. So pretty, pretty straightforward stuff here. You get 400 credits when you sign up for a new account. Maybe I'll put it up to more, although I'm leery of some gamer asshole finding it and screwing me out of credits. So uh, it's in 400 credits is enough to start off. After that, credits cost you 0 0.0001. One dollar, So pretty cheap, not as cheap as if you got the base rate on Helium, but you also don't have to pay Paul to run a ChirpStack instance for you, which is not cheap. Um, that's what I'm doing for you. So if you want to support this channel, uh, you can always do like and subscribe and all that crap, but you can also just buy data credits on this thing and use them and figure out how to use ChirpStack. Okay, enough of the... Um, Enough of, that, enough of that crap. So API keys we'll come back to in another video. What we're gonna start with is device profiles. Now I've already got a device profile in here. It's a little bit confusing, especially if you used to Helium console. Helium console had devices, functions, and integrations. And the way that that would work is if you went over to flows, you'd see a device, which is this gray thing. In this case, it's the door sensor in my garage. There was a function which told, um, basically told, what is it, the LNS, what to what these things mean, what the de decoded packets mean. So the uh, function was also a decoder. And then it sent it to an integration. In this case, it sent it to an MQTT, my home assistant, so that my home assistant could turn off a light or turn on a light when, uh, when I open or close the door at night. Now you can see the same kind of thing with flows across the entire Helium console, but ChirpStack is not Helium console. So Confusingly, the first thing that you're going to need to do when you set up a device is to set up a device profile. Now, we're going to set up a device profile that is almost exactly the same as this one, just to show you how to do it. So I've already got this thing in here. It's the soil moisture sensor. The soil moisture sensor is the one from Maker Fabs. That is the one that I use for all the demos. It's really easy to use. They're about 20 bucks plus shipping from Maker Fabs. I may sell them for a little bit um, I don't know if I'll sell them for a little bit less on the Gristle King site, but you can buy that. They're easy, easy to use, and they send out soil moisture, temperature, and I think humidity. So really straightforward, nice device to start onboarding with and a little bit useful. Okay, so what we're going to start with is adding a device profile. Now, when you click that button, that add device profile, it brings up all the blank pages that you could have for the device profile. We're going to name this soil moisture um, sensor. And... I'm gonna do this for a soil moisture sensor that I just put into a field that doesn't always connect to Helium. So it's supposed to fire off a packet every hour, but just because where it is, there's something blocking it, it usually fires it off every two, maybe every three hours. So I'm gonna make one change later on in this video. I'll show you when I make it, but um, I'm gonna call this the, f um, so this is the Maker Fabs. Uh, actually, I'll put that at the beginning. Maker Fabs soil moisture sensor, and this is their uh, this is also kind of confusing LoRaWAN. They had one called a V3, which you could put on LoRaWAN, but this is their LoRaWAN sensor. It's the red one. And then I'll call this one the uh, four hour sensor. 
Um, the description is going to be blah, 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 whatever you want, to, whatever you want to do. And what you could do is say the firmware for this um, is found for this, good God, neck is found, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want. Uh, this is the series of sensors. Um, in my case, in a mountain meadow, et cetera, et cetera. Put whatever you want down here that will help you remember whatever it is you need to remember the next time that you come back to this thing. Um, and the region, in my case, is going to be US 915. Um, I'd love to be down in Australia right now or in Europe, but uh, I'm not. I'm in America, in San Diego. Uh, I leave everything else the same. You can fiddle with this if you're advanced. If you're not, you don't need to. And remember when I said the four-hour thing? Um, this is the expected uplink interval. I'm going to set that to 14,400. Um, and I only know that because I just just did it. So that's the number of seconds in four hours, I think. So that means that if I miss an hour, the thing's still going to be green. Um, I get kind of bugged if we go back to dashboard. Now you would have hit submit if you want to submit the thing, but I get kind of bugged if I see this thing inactive or never seen. So I want to see it green. So I'm cheating a little bit there. Now you may have said, Jesus, Nick, you just typed all that stuff in and you had a device profile and then you navigated away and it's not there anymore. And you would be correct. Um, this is the device profile that was already there. What I've done for you on this particular sensor is throughout the Medio Scientific ChirpStack server is you can add that same device profile. Instead of filling all this stuff out, you go to select device profile template and you'll click on this thing, hit maker fabs. I've already put all this stuff in there for you. And I'll keep adding more sensors as I get ones in that are tested and useful on Helium um, and hit okay. And then everything will fill, uh, fill out for you. So this is the US 915, so a moisture sensor lower win. We can put this, we'll call this one a four hour sensor. We'll go down here, we'll make that one change, 14400. And you can see that I'm saying, hey, this is the US 915 version of blah, blah, blah. You can find it at the GitHub at Rocks thing. R4WK has been immensely helpful in this whole project. So thanks uh, and a huge shout out to him. Um, or her, I'm pretty sure it's him. I've never actually talked to Rock on the, on the phone, so. Maybe I'm wrong, um, but anyway, thanks, Chuck. <laughs> and then you hit submit. Okay, so now you've got your four-hour template. I got a one-hour template and a four-hour template. Um, so now you've got something in there to work with. The next thing you're going to do is go down to applications. We're going to skip this gateways thing for the reason we talked about in the beginning of it, in the beginning of the video. And we're going to create another application. I've got one in here already. So we hit add application. We'll call this test application for the Maker Fabs MF Lorawan Soil Moisture Sensor. All right, and you can describe it however you want. This is my Super Mountain Meadow Sensor uh, in the left quadrant or, you know, at whatever paragliding site. Um, Right, like whatever it is, you call it uh, Blossom or Little Black or, or whatever it is. Those are names of paragliding sites here. Um, this one isn't a Blossom. Okay, so now the application is in there. What we need to do now is add in a device. And all this stuff is pretty straightforward, but I've found it really helpful to look at things and see how things are done by other people on YouTube. So I'm just gonna do, go through this thing soup to nuts. Um, we're gonna hit add a device. And now we're gonna add a device. So let's say this is in the Northeast quadrant of mountain meadow and you figure out your naming system for this so this might be um mf soil moisture sensor l for lorawan um and this is whatever we can call this four hour you can call can call whatever you want um and then i might explain that to myself here so that if i come back in three months i'm like dude what was this again northeast mountain meadow etc etc i might say mf equals maker fabs however you want to do it. All right. Now we'll go down to device EUI. If you already have the keys and you can get the keys, these, these things come with keys already preloaded in them. Um, I just load my own because that is, I don't know, more fun is you'll hit this little button right here and that will generate a dev EUI for you. Now, semi confusingly, if you're coming from helium, a device on chirp stack or in chirp stack does not need an app EUI. It just needs a dev EUI and an app key. So just two things. Back in Helium, we needed three things. Uh, in this one, you only need two. And then we'll go down to device profile and we're going to pick the four hour profile. It's the one that we just um, just submitted. If you want to use tags and variables, you can play around with these. I haven't done it yet, but they're up there. You can mess with it. Um, and then we're going to hit submit. 
And now we've got a, an, a device with a dev UI. We're gonna need an application key or an app key. And I'm gonna do the same thing there. I'm gonna have ChirpStack generate that for me. If you wanna look at that, you hit this little thing. So it's BB35, blah, 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 hit submit. And now you are uh, looking at the device dashboard. So across the top, you can see the tenant. In this case, the tenant is next test account. We're in application. So this menu right here, uh, the application is called test application for the make fed, blah, 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 device, and then the name of the device. Now you could play around with how you figure out how you're gonna name these and the difference between a device profile and an application could be super useful for you and it will be super useful for you as you get more and more devices out there with one or two devices. It's kind of hard to see how those things are a little bit different, but keep adding them and you'll see what's going on. Um, once we're here and we've got our device actually working, you'll start to see a couple uh, dots here showing you what's going on. And we can check those out. Um, if we go back to applications and we go to my, ooh, I think this is the one I just went to, sorry. I don't know, that was, that was it. I was naming things a little bit confusingly earlier today. Um, here's so here's one of these these guys right here. So we're seeing it was received. It had a couple different uh, the number of counts, or, you know, number of what is it number of hotspots received? Uh, RSSI, all the stuff that you're kind of used to SNR, all the geeky shit that you're into. This is one that is out in the field and working. We'll just go across these tabs on the top. Um, remember this, the configuration. So we already set this up. This is one where I actually put all that stuff in there. If you want to see the entire window, just drag it down. And that's how I named these guys. Um, if you need to see your keys again, you can just hit the that uh, iDevice and see the key. Into activation, we see the dev UI on this one. And then if you need network or application session key, you're probably not watching this video, to be totally honest with you. Uh, you can skip that. If you need to send a downlink, you go to Q. So a little bit different than Helium console. Uh, we're just gonna use Q and then you put in your downlink uh, here. And then we've got events and LoRaWAN frames. And so you can go through these, you can check out, you can click on the up. It will show you what's going on here. It'll show you what account it is, what hotspot it's being seen by, all of that stuff. If you wanna see the specific LoRaWAN frames, you can check this out. You can do the same kind of thing. All that stuff is in here. And that is pretty much how to use ChirpStack on Helium. Um, up at the top right, you can see, I think I've had this thing running for a day or two. I've been blasting at this thing and I've got, uh, I started with 400, I'm down to 361. So it'll last you long enough to get you started and see if you like it. If you like it, you can always get more credits. Um, I think that is pretty straightforward. You come up here and purchase data credits um, and that will walk you through all this stuff. So you need to put in company name, user, your complete user profile, usual stuff uh, when you're buying something on the interwebs. And that's pretty much it. Um, I think the rest of it you can find by kind of cruising around. If we go into tenant details, the other thing to look at is this is the max uh, number of, um, what is it? Hotspots you want to buy from. So in this case, I just need to buy from one hotspot. Um, I think the default is two. You're buying from two, two hotspots. You don't need to do that. You can if you want. Uh, but that's the only other thing that you need to set. And then this tells you what everything is that you got. So you got 400 DC for free with the account. If you want to buy more, it's $0.0001. And then the minimum amount of DC you can buy is 10,000 DC. That's so I don't uh, sell you a dollar at a time and get dinged on credit card fees. Um, and then this is a, an uplink message is 7 DCs. A duplicate is 12 DCs. If you geek out, look for this as much as you want. But that is Helium on ChirpStack. I'll do other videos on how to take this data and then visualize it. Um, but for right now, I think we're pretty good. The last thing is down at the bottom for right now, uh, you've got my email here, nick at gristleking.com. This is still a beta. Paul and I are running this together as kind of a public like, hey, let's see what bugs people find. If you find bugs, you can write me, nick at gristleking.com. Uh, I will pass it on to Paul and we'll make sure that we get this thing fixed and up and running for you as fast as we possibly can. So that's what's going on with Chirp Stack to Helium. Hopefully that is super helpful for you. If you have questions, put them down in the description. All the links and stuff are down in the description, all that good stuff. If you like this content, go ahead and like or subscribe what is it, share this thing? That's probably the most important thing uh, for me is I know I'm supposed to be growing my YouTube account, but it's actually way more important to me to make sure that people know how to use this pretty amazing global network that we just built. And so I would much rather that you share this thing with someone who wants to know how to use it, someone who might be interested in using it, someone who wants help on using Helium. That is way more important to me, although the like and subscribe, that's helpful, I guess, for getting the word out to, uh, to more people. So that's what's going on. Have a ripping day and let me know how you are using Helium. Rock and roll.